So we've been talking about Boolean logic, and we've got the list of possible functions, and we've got and, or, and not, and what they do and what they're good for. We've got the definitions of and, or, and not. Uh, and we've got some other functions, exclusive or, and nor, and stuff like that. Um, the next thing I want to look at is, as we're starting to learn about how to simplify these algebraics so that we can make the simplest, smallest circuit, I want to look at some of the common simplification rules. And they're going to be different than simplification rules for common, our sort of regular algebra. Uh, because again, this is Boolean or binary algebra, which means the variables can only either be 1 or 0. Which means certain things don't work the way you might expect. For example, if you have a variable and you multiply by 1, uh, in regular algebra, you get the variable back again. Right? Well, let's see what this looks like in our binary algebra. Here's a, and here's 1, and we want to and these two together. And these two together, what happens? Well, and is true, remember, only if uh, both are true. So this one is false, this one is true, we get our a back again. Great. That's what we were hoping to do. What if we add one, a or one? What happens then? We don't get two. We can't get two. There aren't two. There's only zero and one. So what happens if we or these two things together? And again, remember, or is true if any of them are true. So zero or one is one. One or one is one. Now that's an odd result. If we or, or add, if we or two numbers together, uh, sorry, if we or a variable with a number 1, we get 1. We get rid of that information. The A goes away. We've lost that information. What about zeros? What happens if we manipulate with 0? A and 0, A or 0. What are those? Well, again, A, 0, and our result. So if we, uh, and, and is true only when both are true. Well, there's no situation where both of these are true, so they're always false. So A and 0 is 0. That kind of makes sense. You multiply by 0, you get 0, right? What about when we or with 0? Or is true if either of them are true, and that happens here. So neither of them are true, so we get a 0. One of them is true, so we get a 1, and that looks a lot like A. So if we add 0, we get a. So that makes sense with addition. This makes sense with multiplication. This makes sense with multiplication. This is the only one that's a bit weird. And by the way, this is why logicians use the plus and the times as shorthand for and and or, because in most circumstances, they kind of work like and and or, as we'll see later with some of the higher level uh, rules that we're going to use. But in this case, if we're manipulating with 1s and zeros, the only thing that's weird uh, is when you add 1, you get 1, which is odd. But it's a dual of this one. These sort of go in pairs, you see? Right? If you multiply by 1, you get, or if you and with 1, you get the initial variable back again. If you or with 0, you get the initial variable back again. Here, if you add uh, or with 1, you get 1. If you and with 0, you get 0. These have names, these rules. These are called identities. Identity, these two. And these two uh, are called 1, 0. And that just means that when you uh, combine with 1, you get 1 instead of getting the value back again. So this is the identities, and in an original, sort of our traditional algebra, the identity is a relatively common thing to do, right? If you have an identity for addition, uh, if you have a plus 0, you get 0, and if you have a times 1, you get 1. These are the identities for addition and multiplication in our traditional algebras, and they're exactly the same as the identities for and and or in our binary algebra. So that's great. The identity is one rule that we can use. Some of the other rules from our traditional algebra are also going to flow through into our binary algebra. Some of them might work in odd ways. Here's one. <clears throat> so this means that it doesn't matter which direction uh, you do an addition in. 
and that's called associativity, and that holds true for traditional algebra and for our Boolean binary algebra in OR and AND. So A, B equals B, A. That is also true. The, and you can prove that to yourself if you want to. So this means associativity. It means it doesn't matter the order you do AND and OR. And that's true. Uh, it's not true for some things in traditional algebras, uh, but for addition and subtraction, multiplication and division. Um, now, not division, not subtraction, right? But for addition, and multiplication, it's true. And it's true also for AND and OR in our binary uh, Boolean logic, algebra. Uh, here's another one. This we call distribution. Uh, this is a bit of a higher level rule. And this is, holds true in our traditional algebra uh, for multiplication and, uh, multiplication and addition. And it holds true also in Boolean algebra. We can prove this to ourselves later on using some of the techniques that we have already seen, uh, the truth table comparison technique. We can also prove that later on with some other techniques that we'll see. Uh, but for now, uh, this is distribution. Now, a really interesting thing that we can I'll show you and then we can prove later is that distribution works uh, in binary logic and Boolean logic in both directions, which means, watch this. That looks really strange. And it should look strange because it's not correct in traditional algebra. But in Boolean algebra, it is correct, and we can prove how that's the case. Uh, but it really sort of brings to fore the, some of the differences between our traditional algebra and our Boolean algebra. So this distribution is in fact exactly true and is the exact dual or the sort of same but opposite of this one. So that's distribution. Uh, we have associativity. Uh, there is also commutativity. A plus B plus C, this is of course or, is the same as A or B or C, and it's similar to associativity. It doesn't matter the order you do things in. Uh, this is called commutativity, commutative. Commutativity, and it applies also for uh, and, A, B, C, is the same as A, B, C. Commutativity. So those are sort of the correlates between traditional algebra and Boolean algebra. And in the next video, I'm going to prove a couple of these and show you one extra one uh, that is special just for Boolean algebra.